Hello, I'm the Hollow One, and today I have a scary story for you called The Clown at Midnight. But before we get into this story, I'd like to ask you guys this question. How would you feel about me doing paranormal encounters on this channel as a playlist? Please comment below if you would like to see that. Now let's get into this story, The Clown at Midnight. There was a man who wanted to hire a clown for his son's birthday party. He asked around at work, and one of his colleagues named Sergio Palma gave him the number of a clown who he said came highly recommended. The man called the number and arranged for the clown to come over on Saturday and entertain the kids at the party. However, when Saturday came around, it was raining and the clown didn't show up. The children grew bored waiting for the clown and went home early. His son was terribly disappointed and ran upstairs to his bedroom in tears. The birthday party was completely ruined. The father kept calling the clown's number, but there was no answer. Why did you recommend such an unreliable clown, Sergio, he said bitterly. That night, the man and his wife were lying in bed exhausted. The party had been a disaster. As he was still irritated that the clown had not showed up, what time did you tell him to come, his wife asked. I said very clearly, Saturday at 12 o'clock, he replied. Maybe he thought it was 12 at night, said his wife. <laughs> a clown at midnight, the man laughed out loud. Who would hire a clown to come to a birthday party at midnight? He turned over and drifted off to sleep. At midnight, there was a, they were awoken by a horrible scream. It sounded like their son. Something's wrong, whispered the mother, turning on the light. Stay here, said the man, jumping out of bed. I'll check on him. Maybe he's just having a bad dream. He stepped into the hallway and immediately stopped in his tracks. There was a trail of muddy footprints on the floor. They were too large to belong to a normal human. The footprints looked like clown shoes. They led from the open window in the bathroom down the hallway to his son's bedroom. A clown he thought horrified. A clown at midnight. And then, without knowing why, he remembered something about Sergio Palmer, his friend for work, who had recommended the clown. Sergio had two sons, but one of his sons mysteriously died a long time ago under mysterious circumstances. He had never discussed it with Sergio himself for obvious reasons, but rumors had spread around the office. After several days of intense searching, Sergio's son had been found dead in the woods. Why did he just remember that now? With a shaking hand, the father reached and opened his son's bedroom door. The room was empty. The bed was unmade and the window was wide open. There were traces of mud on the carpet. The man let out an anguish howl and ran out of the house. His wife followed him. He started calling his son's name over and over. The neighbors turned on their lights and came out to see what was wrong. Someone's kidnapped my son, the man cried out loud. It's a clown. One of the neighbors called the police. A few minutes later, later several squad cars arrived. They immediately spread out and started searching the area for the missing boy. Just then, the man received the phone call. It was his colleague, Sergio Palma. He was crying between babbles and sobs. Sergio tried to apologize for what he had done. What did you do, cried the father. What did you do? Where is my son? Who is that clown you told me to hire? I, I don't even know, Sergio whispered, his voice barely loud. I don't even know if he's human, but I know he's uh, hungry, always hungry. Hungry for more victims. He took my oldest son. Then last week he came back for my youngest son. I told him to take yours instead. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Tell my son I love him. Where is he, screamed the man. Where is my son? Look in the forest, Sergio whimpered. He always nails the heads of the victims to the tree as a signal. What the hell do you mean by that? The man screamed. Before he could say another word, he heard a loud gunshot on the other end of the phone, and then the line went dead. The father dropped the phone and ran to his house, went, ran out of his house. He went into the forest, which stood behind the house. When he came to a big gnarled oak tree, he suddenly stopped, sank to his knees, and began to cry uncontrollably. There he had found what remained of his son. Now if you like this story, give me a like, subscribe, comment, and share. That would greatly be appreciated. And remember, forever and always, welcome to the void.